Hi, so in this video, what I wanted to highlight is how we can use different models in Power BI with the help of Python. So here I have two models. I have a log logistic regression model and a gradient boost model. And what we're doing is trying to classify whether someone stayed or they left the company. So this would fall into classification. And we can take a quick look at the data here. So if I move over to the data tab, we can see in our data we have all of these different features such as satisfaction level, last evaluation, the number of projects, average monthly hours, time uh, spent at the company, work accident. And here is the column that we're trying to predict whether they stayed or left. And uh, we have the other columns, promotions, and then we have two categorical columns here, which are department and salary. So if you know anything about a model, uh, you're not going to be able to pass in any kind of categorical data unless you encode it. So I'm going to show you how to encode this information and, and pass that into a model. And then we kind of talk a little bit about the difference between the, uh, just the out-of-the-box logistic regression model and a gradient boost model and what's the difference there. So first let me go to transform data and I'll show you the Python script. So you can see what I've done here is I have my original data. I've duplicated it. And that's why you see the two indicated there. And if we look at my um, applied steps, you can see I what I did is I ran a Python script here. So let's dive in to that. So as we talked about before, we need to encode our categorical data. So I definitely need to bring in a package that will allow me to encode the data. So we just imported our packages and I'm going to document what I'm doing here, import packages. And so I'm doing that with the hashtag there. And then he, what I've done is I'm imported pandas as PD. And then from the scikit-learn ensemble package, I've imported the gradient boost classifier. And from scikit-learn.linear model, I've imported a logistic regression model. And then here, I've um, from scikit-learn preprocessing, which is necessary for us to encode that information. I, I brought in two packages, but I've only used one. I imported label encoder and one hot encoder. And they kind of do the same things. There are some advantages of these over um, each other, but I wanted to just bring both in. And then the only thing I did here was save over the data set. So I'm going to just uh, document that. So resave the data set because by default your variable is called data set but I don't want to keep writing uh, the long word data set so I just say it resaved it as uh, DF and now what we're going to do we're going to encode and um, fit our data so you can see what I've done here I use a variable and you can call it whatever you want I use encode and then I instantiate it. So with Psychic Learn, you need to uh, call the actual model and then you need to fit it. So I, here's where I've kind of instantiated the model and called it label encoder. And what's that going to do that, that is going to allow us to fit and transform the data that we pass into it. And we're going to do that to satisfaction label, salary, and department. Um, I'm actually not sure why we did it with satisfaction label because I'm I think that is a categorical variable so I'm going to comment that out I think I must have done that by mistake so if you ever want to just get rid of a particular line and not have that run you can also comment that out then what I did is for salary which was a categorical I encoded that 
because salary was either high or low as a uh, string. And then for the department, I encoded that also. So I fit and transformed that and changed departments. And then I just, next what we did, we created, created our our features and target variable. So we, just by default, we call X our features, and that would be everything that we want to be included in being able to predict whether someone left. So you can see that as DF, and I have passed in all of the columns. And then for the Y variable, which is going to be um, our dependent variable, I passed in left, which is the column that indicates whether the person stayed or left. So that is where we create our features and target variable, variables. And then lastly here, what I did was we used the models to predict. Now, usually um, in machine learning, we actually want to create a training and test set, but I didn't want to have this go too long, and I just wanted to show you how to use those models. And we, in an upcoming course where we're kind of digging into more machine learning, you kind of see the advantage of training your data instead of running it over all of your data. So for model one, I use logistic regression. For model two, I use a gradient boosting classifier. And we need to fit our actual data. So the model needs to kind of um, be past all of the parameters that you want. So that's why you see in model one, we're fitting the data. Model two, we're also fitting the data. And then the only thing we're doing here is creating a new column with logistic regression predictions for our uh, independent variables and then a gradient boost prediction also to create our columns. So now I'm going to just click OK to run that. And that should all run and then we'll be faced with the next steps. It might take a moment, but both of those models are running. So you can see here, we can go down to the values. Well, let's go back up to run script. And you can see all those variables are there. The original data set is still called data set. Then DF is what we were using as our final data frame. And then X was what we passed in as our uh, feature set. So what I did is I pulled in DF. And then I just reordered the columns here. So we could see them all next to each other. So you can see left column here, logistic regression. So this would be our actuals, the left column, logistic regression. So you can see we're already starting to have um, some uh, level of accuracy where left is one and zero is whether they stayed. And then you see logistic regression here did not predict that they would leave, but gradient boosting did. Um, and then we replaced um, both the one and zeros with left and stayed just to make that a little bit more easier. Then I'm just going to close and apply this. And then let's kind of talk about the advantages of uh, either one of those models. So now it's applying the changes. So now we can take a look at the results. As you can see with logistic regression, we didn't have a good prediction over all of our data. You can see that our actuals, there was 76% of the people who actually uh, stayed in the company and logistic regression predicted 89% while we get closer with gradient boosting. And then we had a 23% or 24% churn for actuals while we we're only able to get about 11% and then gradient boosting got about 23%. So why did gradient boosting do a little bit better? Now there's a couple reasons, it's just not, we can't just say it's a better model. One, we 
we didn't train our data, so we didn't remove a section of our data to actually uh, train. And usually with gradient boosting, because gradient boosting is an ensemble model where it has a tree-based model and a regression model, so it usually does very well. But the problem is what we say it overfits or it's not. In other words, it's not learning. It's actually copying. So that's why we create that training and test set. But what I wanted to do is show you how we can quickly incorporate different models. We can look a little bit deeper into training these models. But this is just a quick and easy video to show you how you can actually incorporate different models and kind of see the difference if you just run those models right out of the box without any extra steps. So I hope that helps. Please leave any comments or suggestions. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.